For Global Medical News Network, this is Miriam Tucker reporting from the annual meeting of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, Houston, Texas. I'm here with Dr. Francesca Rubino of New York Presbyterian Hospital and Weill Cornell Medical Center. This morning you spoke about metabolic surgery. Um, how is that different from bariatric surgery? Well, that's the question that everybody asked me. Uh, now, I think it's, uh, it's an, an important difference. Bariatric surgery so far has been uh, considered in a surgical approach to obesity itself and with the main aim of, uh, increasing, of decreasing body weight. Uh, metabolic surgery instead is an approach that uh, aims at controlling the metabolic disease behind uh, uh, excess body weight and mm -hmm. rather than just uh, making people shed some pounds, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether or not we can use the same uh, operations uh, that we use in conventional bariatric surgery, the, the aim is completely different. And that entails also uh, the um, fact that we are, um, is, we are basing our approach on mechanism of action that are not metabolic mm -hmm. rather than just mechanical. So you've been doing metabolic surgery in patients with diabetes. How, what have your results been? Well, the, the fact that diabetes improves uh, dramatically after what they were considered mm -hmm. bariatric procedures is well known since many years. What it was really known was the fact that uh, this doesn't come just because of uh, weight loss as everybody thought before. But as I say, because this procedure has basically changed the anatomy of uh, the bowel, which is a very important endocrine organ, and it's the organ that produces the most important hormones that are involved in uh, insulin secretion and action. So uh, metabolic surgery does uh, uh, change the physiology and as a result um, uh, the um, improved diabetes. Uh, patients do extremely well clinically, but what it looks uh, uh, more important is the fact that their uh, alter metabolic alterations are dramatically improved and sometimes completely mm -hmm. resolved by the operations. And you're using this in pa patients with diabetes who aren't mor morbidly obese? We, when I was in Europe, we started to do some uh, small clinical trials yeah. and besides my own experience, there are many other centers where this has been done. And in fact, what the experience so far shows is that there is not a precise cutoff BMI that may predict when uh, surgery mm -hmm. can be affected. So there is a chance that we might help more patients than the one that have been referred to surgery so far, but I think we need more clinical trials to really define who is the ideal candidate for surgery. I know that there is some opposition to what you're doing. What are some of the arguments you've heard and how do you answer your critics? Well, it's normal that you have some healthy skepticism, mm -hmm. we, if you will. This is a complete departure from how diabetes has been treated so far, and there's no doubt that uh, uh, many uh, colleagues or uh, clinicians may feel like uh, this might be too aggressive or mm -hmm. um, maybe not uh, even reasonable. But as a matter of fact, when you look at the uh, mortality rates, the risk associated with the procedure, which should be always considered, uh, they are favorable if you consider the uh, morbidity of living with diabetes. Mm -hmm. So the uh, idea is, okay, mm -hmm. sure, we should not rush every patient into surgery, mm -hmm. but when uh, diabetes is getting out of control and chances are that complications will come from diabetes or even uh, life expectancy is reduced and there is no effect from conventional therapies, well, having another option uh, is, is much better than not having another option. For Global Medical News Network, this has been Miriam Tucker reporting live from Houston, Texas.